when you allow a stranger into your house, you may just be opening a door to a disaster the likes of which you could never have imagined. For the Engelhart family, their lovely home was turned into the scene of a massacre. The 911 call that followed is suitably disturbing, but for the dispatcher, it's a race to figure out the mystery of who is pleading for help and who is holding the murder weapon. 911, where do you need assistance? I need um, an ambulance for two or somebody just come quick to um, what address? Ten. Okay. A lot, a lot of blood loss. It's not... Okay, who's hurt? Um, my mom and my sister and my boyfriend. What happened? Um, it's kind of a long story and I just need somebody to get here quick, please. Do not hang up with me. Hold on. Okay. Okay, ma'am, I need you to calm down, okay? Tell me exactly what happened. Um. Ma'am? What you I need you to tell me exactly what happened, okay? Uh, hello? Hello, what's happening over there? Uh, it already happened. What's happening? Uh, uh, hi. Hello? Hello? What is your name, sir? I'm losing. I'm really losing. Well, who's the girl? Can you put her back on the line? Laura Tide. Laura Tide. Okay. Laura Tide just stabbed me. Who tried to stab you? He took the knife from me. Okay. And he stabbed me in the arm. Hold on a second, all right? I fought for the knife. He took the knife from me. Who, who stabbed you, sir? Sir, who stabbed you? Hello? Who stabbed him? Um, my sister did. Where is your sister now? I don't know. I think she's going Where is she, ma'am? She's on the floor. She's on the floor? Did she, how did she end up on the floor? Okay, ma'am, I need you to take a deep breath. Tell me exactly how she ended up on the floor. Okay, ma'am, what is your name? Her name is Amanda Engelheit. That's your, that's the girl's name I was just talking to? Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? It's DeAndre Howard. DeAndre? Mr. Howard? Amanda Engelhardt is my fiance. We're getting married this summer. Okay. And In the backyard. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will make it. You you will make it, sir. I just tell me you've yeah, got help on the way, all right? Listen, Andre. Was it was it her sister that stabbed you? Yeah. Where is she right now? <laughs> we were fighting for the knife and I stabbed her. She, she's not she's not talking. She's not okay, so she stabbed you and you stabbed her? <laughs> Yes. Okay, are you, you and her the only two that are hurt? No, her dad. Where, where is her dad? He's dead. Okay, Andre, you just know. stay with me on the phone, all right? Okay, Andre, uh, uh, uh. what exactly happened? How did this start? I see. I see. I see. me for the knife, stabbed me in my arm. Uh huh. My right bite fell together. See you again, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, Andre, you still with me? Andre? Hello, Andre? Andre, you there? <laughs> hello? Um, yeah, hello, I think we're at the door. Okay, go to the door. Stay on the phone with me, go to the door, okay? Okay. Do not hang up with me. Go to the door. Okay. I, I'm going to go to the door. <laughs> so I have four minutes. I know. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Are they? Are you with the police right now? I'm. I'm walking to the door. Okay. Where is this knife at right now? I don't know. Okay. Oh, they're not here yet. They're not, they're not okay. here yet. All right. All right. I hear them. I hear them. What is your name? Amanda. Okay, Amanda. Look, you're doing real good. All right. What's going on with Andre? Um, he stabbed me. 
with him, man. Yeah, well, what's happening with him right now? I, you just stopped talking to me. Um, he keeps going kind of in and out. Um, is he only stabbed in the arm or is he stabbed there elsewhere? He's, he's only stabbed in the arm, I think. Okay, he's been stopped. Oh. Okay, all right. Just stay on the phone with me until the police are talking to you, okay? Okay. I don't see any ambulance. What's that? I don't see any ambulance. They're on the way. Okay. All right, the police are going to speak to you first, okay? The ambulance is on the way, all right? There's a lot of here. Hello? Okay, then. Okay, talk, talk with the police, Amanda, okay? okay. All right. As police arrived at the Engelhart family home in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, law enforcement were already expecting to walk into a difficult situation, though nothing could have prepared them for the house of horrors that was really waiting for them inside the Engelhart home. 25-year-old Dandre Howard had traveled to the Engelhart house with his girlfriend Amanda. They were in the midst of a heated argument stemming from Dandre's paranoia of Amanda cheating on him. After cooling off, Amanda went to sleep only to be awoken by the knife-wielding maniac she once called her partner. Dandre immediately ordered Amanda and her mother, Shelley, into the family's den. He then positioned the mother and daughter back to back and tied them up. This hostage situation was something already best suited for a horror movie, but things went from bad to worse when Dandre attempted to tie Amanda's sister Laura up as well. Laura Engelhart made a brave but ultimately ill-advised attempt to stop Dandre. She managed to wrestle the knife from his grip and stab him in the arm, but all this did, in reality, was greatly anger Dan Ray Howard. The man, who had long been a sufferer of mental health issues, retained control of the knife and proceeded to hack, slash, and stab at both Laura and Shelley Engelhart. Hair-raising screams filled the family home, and these same cries for help woke Laura and Amanda's grandmother, 73-year-old Marlene. The eldest member of the Engelhart family hurried downstairs to see to her daughter and two granddaughters, but Dandre Howard was waiting. The young man easily overpowered Marlene, stabbing her multiple times and leaving her dead in the kitchen. Marlene's desperate cries woke the last member of the family that was still asleep, 57-year-old Alan Engelhart, father to Amanda and Laura, and husband to Shelley. Alan's attempts to save his family fared no better than Marlene's. He was brutally killed in the same kitchen by Dandre. After committing two horrendous murders and savagely attacking Laura and Shelley, Dandre paced between the den and kitchen, leaving a trail of blood between the rooms and turning the Engelhart home into a nightmarish crime scene. Howard's next move was to rip the house phone from the wall, preventing any of the surviving Engelharts from calling for help. After almost an entire hour, Dandre calmed down and seemingly began to realize what he had done. He lay down beside a bloodied and beaten Laura and asked her for forgiveness. Perhaps out of desperation, or perhaps simply seeing the situation in a different manner than so many would have, Laura told Dandre that she forgave him. This prompted Howard to allow his girlfriend Amanda to make the 911 call that the surviving family members so desperately needed. Ambulances arrived at the scene and rushed Laura and her mother Shelley to hospital. Miraculously, Shelley and Gilhart survived her stab wounds and made a full recovery. For Laura though, it was too late. The 18-year-old died on the way to the hospital. In just a few hours, Dandre Howard had murdered three people and attempted to kill another. He had forever broken the Engelhart family tree. In the aftermath of the murders, reports circulated on how the Engelharts had embraced Dandre as one of their own. This young man had spent his childhood in the protection of the state. Dandre was taken from his own mother at age six when his two half-brothers were born with drugs in their system. By age nine, Dandre was showing concerning signs of aggression. He fathered a child at age 15, and at 16 years old, he was arrested for sexual assault and convicted as a juvenile offender. Dandre Howard also had a history of drug use. Despite all of this, Dandre was given a second chance at life as an adult. His upbringing was far from traditional, and his past behavior was far from exemplary, yet the Engelharts had given him his first real chance at having a loving home to call his own. Howard attended church alongside them, became a member of the community, and even lived at the family home for a short while. Dandre and Amanda also had a child together, but luckily, their eight-month-old daughter was not present during the murders. With the Engelharts fitting the picture of a loving, wholesome American family, what could have possibly pushed a man to wreak havoc upon them as they slept at night? 
Could paranoia over Amanda's loyalty have really driven Andre to commit such unforgivable crimes? While the instability in their relationship was likely due to Dandry's unshakable insecurities, the brutal violence he enacted upon the Engelhart family is thanks to something far more disturbing. Dandre Howard would claim that demons got to him and caused him to use a knife as a weapon against five innocent people. When the time for trial arrived, Dandre spent three hours testifying in his own defense, speaking of how he heard voices in his head and how he could not quieten the loud noises that altered his thinking and his perception at the time of the murders. Howard's lawyer, public defender Deanna Binstock asked the judge for leniency due to Dandry's long history of mental illness. They asked that Dandre be found not guilty by reason of insanity. Their request was understandably denied. Howard was found to have fully understood the gravity of his actions, and the fact that he tied members of the family up before killing them, shows that his chilling actions were premeditated. Dandre Howard was found guilty, but he did avoid the death penalty. Instead, the then 26-year-old was sentenced to three life terms in prison plus 60 years. Howard showed no emotion as he heard the sentence read. Dandre Howard will now spend the rest of his days locked away, and for the surviving Engelharts, closure is a welcome, albeit small comfort. Jeff Engelhart, brother to Laura and Amanda, was positive in his hopes that Dandre would learn to change for the better during his time in prison. I don't want to hate you. I want you to try hard every day to think about the people you killed and who they were. Survivors Shelley and Gilhart and her daughter Amanda returned to live in their Hoffman Estates home. Dandre Howard had forever destroyed the Engelhart family, but he had also done irreparable harm to his own as well. Dandre's mother could not bring herself to speak to reporters about her son's heinous actions, instead presenting them a handwritten note apologizing for the pain that her son had caused. The family will remain in my prayers. We all have suffered through this trying time. The gruesome nature of these murders is enough to send chills down any spine, but they also prompt us to think about how well we really know the people we let into our homes. The Inglehearts did something commendable by allowing a man with a troubled past into theirs, but that warm-hearted gesture is also the one which cost some of them their lives. Should this innocent family have exercised further caution when it came to accepting Amanda's partner? Or was there really no way of knowing what horrors Dandre Howard was truly capable of? The answer to this question likely matters little to the victims and the survivors of the Engelhart family murders, but it may hold the key to preventing such a disturbing crime from ever happening again.